Hey y'all, I'm Tracy and this is Just Dig It Farms. Thanks so much for hanging out with us again today. If you're new to our channel, we're so happy that you guys decided to join us on our farm journey. And we look forward to sharing all of our adventures with you. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when we put out new videos. And please like and share the videos if you enjoy them. Today I am in my protege garden working. I've been out here since early this morning and I've kind of gotten a little overwhelmed. Um, Gene and I both work full time and we just have a whole, whole lot going on. And this armadillo could come in and destroyed a lot of the things that we had already planted, got done and was moving on to the next thing. So I decided today, instead of being overwhelmed with all the things that I needed to do and get done, to just take it one bed at a time. And I'm going through and weeding the bed, weeding the rows, which there's not a whole lot of weeds because of the hay and the cardboard that we use, but I'm just pulling any weeds that's in the bed. Then I'm re-sowing any seed that needs to be re-sown or moving little baby transplants or, or whatever I need to do. I'm planting anything that I've got that I've been holding over at the garden shed. I'm putting those things in the ground if they belong in that bed. I'm um, fertilizing everything, I'm pruning, tying up tomatoes, tying up beans, um, just the maintenance, just the maintenance that needs to be done. So I'm just taking it one bed at a time, doing all those things, and then I'm putting on a little light covering of hay where I need it, where it's gotten bare or whatever. Then I'm watering it all in really good. And um, then I'm coming back and putting this product on it that I found called Armadillo Scram. And I hope and pray this works. Let me show it to you. This is it, Armadillo Scram Granular Repellent. And it's all organic. It's 100% natural and organic. Let's see what these ingredients are in here. All right, the ingredients are castor oil, thyme oil, rosemary oil, white pepper, garlic oil, citronella oil, peanut holes, linseed oil, and fish oil. So this is supposed to keep the armadillos away. I hope this works. So once I get each bed back in order, cleaned up, repair the damage that the armadillo did, re seeds, all those things that need to be done, then I'm coming back and putting this armadillo scram in the beds. Now, really, it doesn't look like he's been out here in a while. It looks like he's moved on. I haven't seen any new damage in the past three or four nights. So I think that he has moved on. But we've also been letting our chickens out every evening and letting them just come through the garden. So my thought in that was if we can remove the food source, the armadillo's food source, then maybe he'll go away. So I've been moving our, my chickens in here and I've watched them get grubs and eat them. So I know that they, that tremendously helped. And now I'm just gonna try this armadillo scram and I'll let you guys know if it works.
orchard this evening. Gene's putting up Pop's birdhouse that he built for us. If y'all didn't catch the story about that, go back and watch our other video. Pop tells about his building birdhouses. He made the birdhouse with the LaGrange College, LaGrange, Georgia car tag because our youngest son Chance went to college there his first year and played football. His first freshman year of college. So he made me this birdhouse and I love it. We're putting it in our orchard out here. Um, this is the entrance to our orchard. We have a major deer problem out here and they've destroyed most of our trees. We've tried all kinds of different things and Gene's come up with this solution. He put these tall posts here and we're gonna run wires across and we're just working on fencing this in to try to keep the deer out. So we've got these tall, tall poles now and I'm going to put, I think I'm going to do coral honeysuckle climbing up these poles and kind of going over it. And we're going to make us a real neat sign that says, uh, just a dig it farms permaculture orchard. And we're going to put across there and on the post, we thought it'd really be cool to put these bird houses that pops making with the car tags on them. And I don't know if you guys follow our friends Cog Hill farm. They're here in Alabama too. In fact, they're not too far from us, but they're awesome. He is hilarious. His little girl, Mary Carl, is something else. She is so smart and his wife's really sweet. I met her at Petals from the Past. Uh, we did some baskets and plants with them and uh, I've just fallen in love with them. If you guys have not checked out Cog Hill Farm, y'all go check them out. They're awesome. But Jason at Cog Hill Farm, he gets all of his YouTube viewers to send car tags where the state where they're from. And he puts them on the side of his little barn shed thing. It's so cute. So when Pop made me this birdhouse out of Chance's car tag, I had this idea that if any of you guys wanted to send us an old car tag or old collegiate tag or whatever, from the state that you're at and send it to us, I could get Pop to make birdhouses with all my YouTube friends and family's car tags and put them out here in our orchard. We're wanting to put birdhouses all along our fence here. All those big tall posts, I want to do birdhouses on those. I thought that would be so fun to have car tags from where you guys are from out here in the orchard. I just think that'd be so awesome. So if any of you guys want to do that and send us a car tag so we can put it on a birdhouse and put it in our permaculture orchard here, I'll put my address below in the description and you can send them to us. I think that'd be so much fun. We're picking some blueberries. They're ready. This is our first year to get blueberries. This is our first year. I'm so excited. The orchard is, Champ, <laughs> Champ loves blueberries. The orchard is um, about four years old and we've lost a lot of things from deer, drought, just different issues. So we've got to get in here and reclaim the orchard. Okay. But a major factor in that is getting this deer fence up before I replant anything. But our blueberries are doing awesome this year. We finally are getting some blueberries, first time ever. The past two years, we should have got blueberries, but we got a late frost, a late freeze that um, killed all the blueberry blooms, so we ended up with no blueberries. But this year, we got a lot of good blueberries. A lot of them's ready. Those down there are loaded. I think I got 15 blueberries in here. We got some plums this year. We got some nectarines. Yeah, check these out. Nice. Is it good? Pretty good. They're not ready. Yeah. Too hard. Peaches. Pears. 
These are Asian pears. Oh, we're gonna have a lot of pears. Well, these figs are coming on too. Yeah, they're doing good. We had a good spring. We had a lot of rain. And we had, uh, we didn't have those late frost. So we had a good spring. We're gonna have a bunch of elderberries this year. Look at all those elderflowers. You can use the flowers and use them in teas, make elderflower tea. But if you use the, if you use all your flowers, then you won't have your berries. But see, that's where the flowers have set fruit and made berries, and these will be your elderberries. But you never eat these green berries, they're toxic. You have to wait till they get really dark purple. But we are gonna be loaded in elderberries. I'm excited about that. Elderberry tincture. You said I could <laughs> use the elderberries. <laughs> elderberry tincture and elderberry cough syrup. There's a bird nest in there, Tracy. Two of them. Yep. The birds love them. See, with the bird houses and with these big uh, shrubs like this, it encourages the birds to come be in the orchard. And you might be thinking, well, why do you want birds in the orchard to come eat your fruit? But the birds eat a lot of the bad insects, and we're growing these things organically, so we don't do any spraying. By having the birds in the orchard, we just have a good balanced ecosystem to help take care of insects and issues like that look at this pomegranate wow this one's loaded we're gonna have a lot of pomegranates this year this is the flower this is the pomegranate flower and it's kind of hard it's starting to turn into a fruit and like right where's the fruit at right here And that's the flower when it's developed into a fruit. And these pomegranates will be ready about, mm, probably around September or so before they're ready. But we're gonna have a lot of pomegranates on this one. That one's got a few and that one doesn't have any yet. But these are Russian white fruited and wonderful. And the Russian is more cold hardy and the Russian and the white fruited are my favorite because they're really, really sweet. This is my little corner where I'm just letting elderberries go wild over here. Look at that one. I'm gonna have so many elderberries this year. I'm so excited about that. Elderberries are expensive. But look at all these that's multiplied. Elderberries colonize big time. So if you're gonna plant them, you make sure you got plenty of room for them. But this is all new growth just from last year. And that one little odd tree right here is a pawpaw. Gotta have two of these to pollinate each other for cross pollination. And I had three out here. Two of them died because this corner never gets watered. We don't have irrigation to this corner yet. So I've got one over behind my garden shed that I'm gonna plant here, but I'm just gonna keep growing it up in a pot and wait and plant it this fall. Because like I said, there's no irrigation over here. It's too difficult to drag a hose over here. So I'm just, oh shoot. Dang, the bees got after us. They're still chasing Jean. <laughs> they love him. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying on the pawpaw is, is I'm gonna wait and plant it in the fall because it'll never make it over there without some water. It's so hot over there. We got a little sidetracked. Back to picking blueberries. One for the bucket, one for me. 
Mm. That tastes better than that other bush. You know what? These are really good. I'm gonna have to look in my garden journal and see exactly which one this one was. It's really sweet. Champ and I are just taking us a little break, sitting on Bill's bench rock, looking at the creek and the water. It's so peaceful out here. Just nature, just the water, the green, the grass, the trees, the forest, the wildlife, the birds. It's just so incredibly peaceful out here. There's so much going on in the world right now with the COVID virus and people being out of work and um, on the brink of losing their homes and, and financially struggling just to buy groceries. And, and now we've got protesting and riots going on and um, people killing people. And it's just horrible what all's going on in the world right now. And it's just very disturbing. I very purposely don't focus on all the negative things, all the bad things. I, I don't even watch the news. I will not turn on the news and watch it. And it's not that I'm being ignorant to what's going on in the world. Honestly, I can't handle it. I can't handle all the sadness and all the, the evilness and all the um, horrible things that's going on and that people do to each other. I purposely just try to focus on the positive and on what I can do to make a change and on what I can do to help people and not focus in on all the, um, the evil and the bad things going on in the world. Jean and my son Chance keep me well posted on what's taking place so I'm not being ignorant to it. I just can't sit and consume myself with all of that. I can't take it. It grieves me and depresses me and I don't wanna focus on it. And I purposely try to keep these videos very uplifting, very inspirational, very encouraging because there's enough bad out there for y'all to watch. I mean, there's enough bad TV, there's enough bad news, there's enough bad everywhere you turn. My goal is to give you guys a space to go and watch something for just a little bit that will encourage you and uplift you and inspire you and maybe give you a little peace and a little joy. 
I would like to just take an opportunity and close this video out with us having a prayer together. Praying for our country, for our president, for our leaders, for our loved ones, for all of the people that are struggling and hurting financially and physically, and for peace just for peace in all these riots and situations and for healing for the people who are sick and just a prayer for God to have mercy on our country. Lord Jesus, I just thank you God for, for all that you have done for us. I thank you for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness and your sacrifice and your love. Jesus, we just come together right now as a group of friends and family in agreement together in prayer asking you father god for your grace and for your mercy on our country i pray father god that you'll give our president and our leaders wisdom and knowledge i pray lord jesus for healing for all of the people who are sick i pray for financial restoration to take place in people's lives in families lives and in our economy I pray, Lord Jesus, for peace in these riot situations. I pray, Father God, that you will move on the hearts of people. And in all of this bad, Father God, that, you, that people will become more aware of who you are. I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you will have mercy on our country, on our nation, and on our world. I pray, Father God, for peace for healing, for restoration. Lord, I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise because I know in all situations and in all things, good and bad, you're in control and you hold us in the palm of your hands. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you guys so much for praying with me and thanks for hanging out with us again this weekend. I pray that you guys have a wonderful week. God bless you, and I'll catch you on the next video.